So, man. Hey. Um, I like the shirt, but I thought this was a... Uh... Please take your shirt off. No, it's take your shoes off. Take your shirt off. I mean, you look really good. Oh, thanks, man. Are you going to pop that bad boy off? Let me see you tighten. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. I, I, I've had, I had shoulder surgery, and I'm body insecure at the moment. So what, what are we doing? It's just we're changing the name of the podcast? No, it's called Take Your Shoes Off, but not Take Your Shirt Off. I have a shirt, actually, coincidentally, if you wouldn't mind, or if you'd like to. Put yeah, this, I mean, okay. I, put this on. I don't know if you've seen this whole it. whole time, I have not. It's a web series I, I made called The Sixth Lead. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I'll send it to you again. What size is this? That's an extra large. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's, that's what I wear. Yeah, it's it a seems little a little tight. snug, yeah. It's a little tight. Could you fix? Is it? Yeah. Okay. It does fit you, though, right? You agree that we could wear the same shirt. Also, my feet are touching the ground here. <laughs> Uh, they're big couches, you know. It's not your fault, actually. I know it's your house, but would you mind taking your shoes off just for the theme of the... Oh, yeah, of course. I, I, I was under the impression that it was take your shirt off. Yeah, yeah. That's why. Scoot doo Blabbity blue Scoot dee Oh, yeah! I get a little, ner- I'm a little nervous because I... Uh, I just miss boundaries all the time mm-hmm. and literally happened last time we were here. Mm-hmm. So now I'm, now I'm aware of the fact that there is a line. I just don't know where it is. I think I know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I have an idea, yeah. but before we get started, um, I'm, Bomba socks is what I'm wearing. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get a sponsorship. So I'm not sponsored by them, right? but I love Bomba socks. Do you ever wear Bombas? I know I have not. I'll have to get you a pair. That'd be awesome. Or perhaps Bombas would want to send us a pair. So we'll figure that out. Um, Maybe. This is the first podcast I haven't given one. T- I ran out of them. I've been giving them to my guests. Oh, okay. So I kept this. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Oh, you get all comfy. I'm Uh-oh. trying to find the best position. So your feet don't swing. Yeah. Did you have the, these couches made special for you? No, you know what? Actually, this entire house right now is staged. It's all staged furniture, but it's probably big furniture because of the size of the room, you know? Yeah. Did you, was that part of what made you want to get the house? You walked in and you thought this was for a big guy? No. Um, oh, the size of the house? Everything that came with the house. Yeah, like even the doorways are, are pretty wide. Yeah, I mean, I, I like big houses, you know. I don't have to duck under the doorways. Sure. Um, some houses I do. My house in Michigan, I have to kind of duck under the doorway and stuff. You keep a house in Detroit? Yeah, well, I, have, I rented a house in Detroit because I didn't know exactly where I wanted to live. I might rent one more year or I might buy. So I love the game of basketball. Mm-hmm. Love. Me too. I know. I'm not the most educated. So forgive me if what I'm asking is... It's fine. Are you staying in Detroit? In Detroit? Uh, no, I mean, people. I, I have two more years on my contract. Yeah, I thought you were there. And then I saw you do a podcast where you were talking about free agency. And oh, no, 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 no. I just meant like... We were talking about how like if guys, even guys that are with a team, like tweet out a, a just a single emoji, people think that something's happening. Like they're either going to get traded or... right. Their, their team could be getting some somebody new not necessarily if you're a free agent and they you guys said that on the podcast you're going to tweet eyes the day before yeah, yeah and so. then people are going to think it means something and then mm-hmm. all the tweets sure are whatever enough, thought. yeah yeah man i wonder well, i wonder what we could do for this one if it, would there be something yeah i don't know i think think we should probably think of something like different yeah because you know if i tweet out another emoji it's not going to quite have the same effect so 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 we did we've done a few podcasts together over the past three years Mm -hmm. um the Mm -hmm. first time was in the summer of 2016 i think yes yeah and you came over to my place oh yes small furniture small doors uh my grandma was there she Mm -hmm. was on the podcast she's a lovely lady we had an we had a plan and we were going to do a weekly podcast together we were talking about it right right right, right. yeah it was it wasn't for sure (laughs) right right Uh, uh but it was kind of an audition process let's see yeah. what the final product yeah. is let's let's test it out yeah. let's see what see what we can come up with which i like the final product i might want to post the clip of you interviewing my mom on this oh yeah okay is it on it's going the audio yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hey, um, Mr. Glassman, first of all, thanks for, thanks for you jumping on the phone. Long time fan. Sure. Um, I always answer the phone direct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. Um, what advice would you give me for my upcoming season? Basketball? To play basketball? Yeah, basketball. Oh, boy, I'm the perfect person to ask for that. I know. Yeah, uh, just you, like you, three, you came to a lot of my high school games. Like, just, you know how it works. Just like three things to focus well, on. the only thing I'm going to say is um, positive thinking. Positive thinking. First Stay one. in the moment. Stay in what? the moment. Wait, hold on. I want to write these down. These are good. Positive so positive thinking. thinking. Positive thinking. Stay in the moment. Stay Eye in the on moment. the ball. Eye on the ball. Keep okay. your arms is that, straight. Keep my arms straight um, at all times. Push the other guy out of the way. Push the other guy out of the way. <laughs> and, um... Uh, yeah, just give me one more. Or can I add this? Yeah. Can I add whoever's watching this podcast that there's no one cuter, funnier, or more delicious than Rick Glassman? Yeah, you can... He's one of the best people I've ever known in my life. He's one of the oh. sweetest, most kind-hearted people in the world whose sense of humor is so real and so true, and he doesn't give into anything that he doesn't believe in just so that somebody will approve of him. All and right. he's truly loyal to the end. All right. Hey, that was beautiful. Thank you, Mom. Now I see why he wanted me to call you. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mom, for uh, thanks for tr trying to get Blake to want to fuck me. Um, <laughs> but on it, we decided that we were going to tweet at The Rock weekly oh, right, right, to try right. and get him to come on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Is there something we could do with The Rock still? Um, do you have a relationship with Dwayne? I don't. I, Dwayne, no. Dwayne and I haven't spoke in many in a while. Uh, when did you speak? When did you meet? I met him at the ESPYs one time. Who okay. said hello? Who said hello to whom? Uh, I think it was kind of a mutual hello. I think it was like a, I, I said hello. I think he said, hey, brother, or something mm -hmm. like that. Something. Did you want the conversation to continue, or did you get out because that was what's cool? I don't think we got out. I think it was just like in passing, mm -hmm. like, hey, how you doing? Good, good to see you. Bye. You know? Yeah. It wasn't like uh, we're standing in a room together, like, hi, what's up? All right, good talking to you. Or, you know, nice to meet you. Big fan type of thing. Are it's you a big kind fan? Of a, yeah, you know what? I, I uh, <laughs> tell you what, I love his Instagram videos. Mm -hmm. Always smiling. <laughs> they just pull me right in. The Iron Paradise. The um, even the ones where he's like on the road and like he's like videoing himself, and there's a car that recognizes him. It's just uh, the way he does it. Anybody else make those videos? Hate him. He does it still like him were you a schwarzenegger fan are you too young for schwarzenegger I'm a, i mean terminator sure but I, i'm not I'm, I'm a little too young for for um schwarzenegger or, or at least like what i was allowed to watch when i was young you know you weren't allowed to watch our movies until you were old uh yeah until i was at least 27 27 27 <laughs> <laughs> how old are you 30 so you just start three years ago you yeah, just started watching our movies them. i've made up for lost time I grew up with you. with uh, Schwarzenegger posters all over my wall. Really? Um, not just one, like my wall paper was Schwarzenegger. You, you and your family strike me as like a family, like you watched any movie you wanted, like from like five years old on. I, I saw Arachnophobia when I was a little kid and yeah. it uh, and Pet Cemetery. Those uh -huh. two movies ruined me. Okay. I still check every toilet before I sit down for spiders. Okay. And Pet Cemetery scared me. So after that, um, I didn't want to see anything scary. Right, but not just scary, but just like, you know, like rated R, like comedy Maybe. or anything like that. The only R movies I think I watched were Schwarzenegger movies. I don't know if I had an interest in them. Okay. But uh, as a kid, I was always very attracted to muscles. Mm -hmm. And when we first met, the first conversation we had was about your arms. Mm -hmm. Our arms. Our arms? Yeah, you, you, you flexed. The first time I met you, you flexed. I was in better shape. I felt good. My veins were popping. Yeah, you, you, uh, you kept pulling your shirt sleeve up. Right. The difference between when I first met you versus now where I had an opportunity to take Sh off my shirt. You, you've been talking about the shoulder thing for a long time. Now, I though. finally had the surgery. Good. Yeah. When was this? December. It feels like it was a week ago. Yeah. No good. Really? No. Still hurts. I could play ball. I just started playing ball again two weeks ago, but I can't work out. Really? No. Left shoulder. Left shoulder. Yeah, you can tell. Could you really? Well, I mean, your, your left arm's a little bit smaller. You could, see, you. You could really see that through a t-shirt? Yeah, I mean, your right arm is pretty, pretty... <sighs> okay. I'm oh, sorry, did I cry? <laughs> no, no, it just sucks. A it's, a, it's a real insecurity of mine. Really? Yeah. You just had surgery, though. Like, my, I had surgery. My left leg's smaller than my right leg. Your 
left arm is bigger than my my legs. Yeah, I mean we're different sized people. All it's right. It's not like it, it's not like one of those things. I think you're you're thinking like after you said that, like and then I like look at both arms, I can tell that one arm looks like it's bigger than the other. Yeah. But it's not like you walked in and I was like, "Oh." Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? I would have I would have if you said something from me walking in, I would have had to just have left. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do this. No, it's not that bad, man. But we're 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 we've started this podcast already and we spent the majority of the time talking. Stop looking at it for real. I know it's a bit, but uh I'm hating I'm hating this game. I hate, I hate this game so much. You, people have commented on my Instagram about it before. I'm not even muscle pictures. Like people have said, "What's up with your what, what's up, how come one arm's bigger than the other arm?" It's like I'm I got to fucking I'm injured, dude. Yeah, people don't get it. But December's a long time. I know. You, I haven't worked out. Like, uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. I do rehab exercises every day. Okay. Um, How bad of a surgery was it? Like, what would they have to do? Cleaned up the labrum, okay. uh, shaved down the uh, the the bone, mm -hmm. took out the bursa sac. Oh wow! And cleaned up some of the debris. Took out the man. You really did yeah. some damage. He said I should have done it years ago, and I've been wanting to do it for years. But I was scared too. Did really? uh, we talk? We bonded over this the first time we met. But we had the same doctor, and he. Yeah. I did PRP. I did stem cell. I did rehab. None yeah. of it worked. Yeah. So I did this, and yeah. dude, who gives a shit? You know, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll be sure. I'll be sure to trim this. You have a hoop outside. Yeah. So when you came to my house the first time, mm -hmm. my friend Brent and John were there. Where's he at? Where well, I don't know, partner. Can't seem to find him. Oh. I Oh. There he is! Oh, there shit! Jesus. God darn it! Get him! Get him! Got him! Bam! Bam! Yeah. And we got into a conversation. Brent Moore and John DeWalt. Go ahead. <laughs> About uh, play, playing one on one with each other <laughs> and how many I could score. And unanimously, you all said that I couldn't score in a game to. In a game to uh, to 11. Yeah, 11. I couldn't score, not make it, take it. I couldn't score one point. We gave you one point. Okay. So you think I could score one point? Yeah, not two. Playing two, ones and twos? Yeah. Do you still think that's the case? Mm hmm Could we do uh, that after this? I just had knee surgery. So Did you? I just now? Really yeah. Man, I'm out of the loop. Yeah, that's fine. I don't, how long ago? Uh, five weeks ago. Swear to God? Yeah. That knee? And you're yeah. walking around like this after five weeks? Yeah, it's just a scope. So they just like uh, two little pinholes. So it's not like, whoosh, you know, yeah. whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's still, you know, whatever. I had a procedure. Okay, I understand. So you've probably talked about this stuff before, but my audience has not heard it. Mm -hmm. So I would love to just do a quick little interview with you. Okay. And you're from Oklahoma. I am from Oklahoma City. And Oklahoma. you're a big dude. Yeah. Were you always a big dude? Yeah, I was always like the tallest kid in my class. Um, and then between my eighth grade year and my ninth grade year, like the, over the two and a half, three months, I grew five inches. So I went from like six, one to six, six in, uh, you know, two and a half months. So then I was like super tall and lanky and skinny. They used, my, my friends used to call me Tayshaun Prince, mm -hmm. like a basketball player, very long and skinny. So then I became like a very tall person, you know? But I was always tall. So you're six six as a freshman. Mm -hmm. So you were varsity basketball player, probably ninth grade. Yeah, but I bet my dad was the varsity basketball coach. My brother was like the star player. And uh, how much older is he? He's three years old, two grades, but three years older. Okay, so he's a junior. You're a freshman. Yeah, uh, I barely made the team. I was like the four. They carried fifteen people. I was the fourteenth guy to make the team. My best friend in my grade was the fifteenth. Um, so we sat at the end of the bench the whole season. Um, I finally like worked my way into like the playing rotation towards the end of the season. And then in the state championship game, I got in uh, right before halftime. I'm not, I still to this day, I'm not sure why my dad put me in. I got in, I caught the ball on the block. I did like a little post move, hit a turnaround jumper, came down, I think got a steal, came back down. My brother hit me for a layup. Um, ended up scoring like six points, like in that short time I was in, like got a couple loose balls, like, and like, that was like the first time I really felt like I was like, like, I love big games. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like my career just after that, just kind of just went. Like, Did you guys win the state championship game? Yeah, we won the state championship game. Do you really. still have the medal? I do. I just saw, I was just home. Actually, I flew home this morning to do this. Um, and <laughs> 
I flew home this morning to do this podcast, and um, I just saw my mom was. Well, I was in my closet with my mom, and I just saw all my state championship medals. You came back to LA to just to do this podcast? Yeah. Well, I was supposed to come back later, and I was like, you know what? I talked to you last night. I was like, you know what? We'll fly home a little bit earlier. Got some stuff done this morning. And now we're here. Oh, sincerely? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thanks for coming. Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, I was going to come home today anyway. But. Did you feel with your dad being the coach that and you not playing much your first year, he was being hard on you or he was being fair? Um, both in a weird way, if that makes sense. He, um, I think because of who my brother was and like, I guess like kind of like the maybe clout that he had or, or our name had a little bit. Um, I think maybe another coach might've like felt like he needed to play me. Mm. Um, and my dad didn't, I, and and that forced me to like. I'm a very competitive person, and and like you know when I, when I like see something that I want or I I want to accomplish something, I I have like a, a you know, certain like drive to get there, you know. And and I remember that year for Christmas, I asked my dad. I didn't, I didn't ask for anything. I asked him to let me into the gym ten times whenever I wanted, and so I got that. And like I you know I just like I did stuff like that. I put in extra time. I would practice with the freshman team i'd practice with the jv team and then i would practice with the varsity team um and i would play all three so i played like on mondays were freshman games tuesdays were jv and varsity wednesday we had off thursday was freshman friday was so i was playing almost every single day with every team practicing doing all that stuff and um i i saw the result of hard work you know and that was that was a big thing for me did your brother help you yeah, I mean, just by nature of like pushing me, not not necessarily like we, we weren't in the gym and he was like, hey, try this. But like we'd play one-on-one, we would play sh- shooting drills or shooting games and I was always trying to chase him and catch him, you know. Was he bigger than you? Yeah, he was bigger than me my whole life until probably my junior year. Were you guys close? Yeah, very close. You yeah. didn't fight? Oh yeah, we fought all the time, but we were close. And now we're like best friends. Freshman year, uh, the last game of the season, right before halftime, you clocked oh pressure is a situation that you thrive in yeah what happens the next year the next year um i filled out a little bit more um i kind of came into my own i i started and averaged i don't know probably like you started the next year the next year yeah i started next year averaged like 19 points or so um my brother was a senior and one state again um had a had a had a good year and then your brother left my brother left. You're the star of the team. And yeah, now now it was kind of my turn to take over his role. Um, and then uh, we won state that next year as a junior. And then Did you win as a senior? Mm-hmm. You won, won state four years in a four row? Four times, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, the two, first two times were clearly like my brother just like dominating everybody. But um, yeah, we won state four times. When did you think that NBA was uh, an actual possibility? Uh, I was never one of those kids that like – it was always like a foregone conclusion. You know, there's, there's certain guys who you just kind of like always like knew were like, you know, they, they, their whole lives they were being told. I was never really like that. I never really thought until like my freshman year when, when I remember my college coach was telling me, you know, you'll have a decision to make at the end of this year. And uh, that's when it like really hit me that like, oh, the, like the NBA is a very real possibility. It was always like a possibility in my mind like I, that I wanted to get to, but it was never like a real attainable thing until probably my freshman year of college. You went to school for two years, didn't you? Mm-hmm. So you so you had the decision to go into the draft after your freshman year. Mm-hmm. You waited. Yeah. Why? To get bigger? Uh, yeah, I just felt like I wasn't ready. I wanted to come back and try to win. Uh, I wanted to, I had a list of goals that I that I was wanted to to hit. And I remember I sat down with one of our assistant coaches or one of our graduate assistants and, and literally made a board of, of all these goals. And he like printed out on, on like a big... Uh, thing and i put it up in my dorm my uh, apartment room do you remember the, the my goals? sophomore year um yeah it was it was um this is after your freshman year this is after my freshman year so between my freshman and sophomore year it was it was a to be ncaa champion big 12 champion big 12 player of the year national player of the year um all the national player of the years and um first pick in the draft is there anything you didn't get national champion how far did you go we lost to North Carolina in the Elite Eight. North Carolina went on to win. They had like six NBA players on their roster. Danny Green, Tyler Hansbrough, Ty Lawson, Wayne Ellington, Cody Zeller. I'm sorry, Tyler Zeller and Ed Davis. Basketball for me was uh, going to college and winning the intramural championships mm-hmm. and getting mm-hmm. the T-shirt. 
I still have the t-shirts. I still never put them in the dryer. Really? I, yeah. I don't put any of my shirts on a dryer. But really? Yeah. Oh. And getting that t-shirt was like, it was a goal of mine. So even though it's a t-shirt, it's right, right, having right. these t-shirts, like I don't wear them. They're ugly shirts and they don't fit me well, but I keep them in my closet. When I see them, I remember like, fuck yeah, yeah. I wanted that. What do you get for getting to the Elite Eight, but not winning a championship? Um, Every like, so you make the tournament and you get like, a, they give you like a, I think at the time it was like a portable DVD player. <laughs> you know, you like you like open the thing. Uh-huh. It's like the MCA's the gift plane. to you for being like one of the 64 best. And you're traveling now, so use this. And at the time, it was like, oh, awesome. Because we used to always have like DVD sleeves. I had like CD cases of DVDs. Yeah. You know, at the time there was no iPad, obviously. Um, And then, you know, Elite Eight, or I'm sorry, Sweet 16 was like something else. I don't remember what. I think maybe, I think maybe Elite Eight you had a ring or something. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. Um, but the point is, there's no real get, there's no real thing to attain unless you win. Yeah, and I was like, why? You, know? you have a lot of you've won a lot of things. Do you have a trophy room? I do have a trophy room downstairs. Can I see it when this is done? Yeah, it was originally. I I, I was just saying when you guys were coming in, I bought this house and it was about a couple months from being done, I think. And so I got to kind of pick out some stuff, and there was a big like wine room downstairs at the time. I didn't really drink mm-hmm. any wine, so the guy was like, um, I'll. I'll make it into a trophy room for you um so it's like this big glass like trophy room but you don't have your state championship medals here i don't have my state championship medals here now is that because no because i just like left them at home like when i went to um when i went to college and i just kind of never like transferred them here and i i just it's like mostly like trophies i don't have any medals in there you know that's you don't have any medals here i don't have any medals yet in this in this trophy and that's the house you grew up in uh no when i after i i signed my first like um contract i I bought my parents a house so they now live in that a different house what's your relationship with them my parents yeah oh that's great i mean my parents are are two like very very hardworking people and and like you know i think the the words like i wouldn't be here today without them you know or or, um you know overstating someone's impact on your life I, i don't think i can overstate um what they have done for me enough i think they're they're just their approach to life, like hard work and discipline, um, those two things especially, like have have um, rubbed off on me, whether I whether I, I wanted it or not. Did you know when you were asking your dad for ten dimes into the gym that you had good work ethic, or was it just about basketball? Did your dad teach you that kind of stuff? My dad did, um, just by by example. Uh, my dad, I don't know if you you followed like. Uh, Oklahoma public schools is one of the worst um, in the country, probably the bottom three as far as public t- public school teacher compensation. So my my dad and my mom were both public school teachers. Uh, they both had two jobs. I would watch my dad get up at seven o'clock in the morning, go to school, teach all day, coach in the afternoon, and then he would drive kids home that didn't have a ride home. He would stop and grab get food for them and drop them off at home, get home probably like at 8.39 eat dinner real quick and then work in his second job which he was, drove people home for five hours no no no, no. <laughs> he coached so he taught yeah, coach yeah, yeah. so co- coaching goes yeah. after yeah i get it whatever um and there's also you know several teams he like had to open and close the gym this whole thing whatever he'd get home at eight nine whatever time it was eat dinner and then work his second job which was uh our, our family had like a family trophy company in our house we would build like awards like trophies plaques medals ribbons um do all this stuff and and we all had to work uh my mom like kind of ran that um but my dad you know had to work and i would he would work until like two in the morning go to sleep for you know four or five hours and do it again what kind of trophies like how do you get into a trophy game that's so funny that Um, that you guys you've won so many and you make them i think he he had had, i think the way he got into it was he had had a, a a buddy who i think had started doing like a you know doing it he had an award shop and my my dad kind of went in on it with him the, the trophy the trophy company was called bnt trophy and it was bob and tommy and shout everybody, out to bob and tommy trophies obviously yeah everybody thought like later on it was blake and taylor my brother's name mm-hmm. it's crazy because we would literally build the trophies that we would eventually receive because we would do most of the leagues in you know the greater oklahoma city area any of the trophies you have here ones that you made no 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 your brother Sorry. play in the nba he did. He got drafted to the Phoenix Suns. We got drafted the same year. So he graduated from Oklahoma and I left two years early. So 
Oh, you played at college together too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. He, he played at the University of Oklahoma with with I played with him. Um, and then we got drafted. He got drafted to the Phoenix Suns. Played there for a couple of years, and then I was in LA for a while. And um, then he played overseas, like Belgium, Italy, China, you know, different places. What's overseas. that transition like going from the NBA to having to go overseas? Um. It depends on what league you go to, what city you go to. For him, Belgium. Uh, when he went, the, his first overseas place was Belgium, and it was a it was a solid team. Um, the thing about playing overseas is like sometimes they just don't pay you, like they will literally just like not pay you, and it's like a whole it's a whole deal. So he like I think I'm pretty sure every team he played for he got paid. It's different, man. Like they they they, they do two a days throughout the season, you know, because they only play like two games a week, one one game a week sometimes. Two days are we have practice. In the morning and yeah. at night, yeah. So it's a different lifestyle. But then after his first season in Belgium, you know, he got married. And then his wife was with him most of the places, so it was a little bit, a little bit easier. His last season was in Italy, and uh, I think he really liked it because it was kind of like a, a more of a like a lifestyle thing for them. Some people play overseas and then go to the NBA, mm -hmm. and some people play in the NBA and then go overseas. Mm -hmm. Are those people always competing with each other? Are there different leagues within it? I mean, overseas, overseas is always yeah. feels so vague to me. I yeah. know people play different countries. What does that mean? What's the league? Yeah, so there's like there's definitely different tiers. Like the Euro League is the biggest league in in Europe, um, and that's like the best teams. When like, you play in the Olympics, it's people from the Euro League, probably, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, mostly, but the Euro League is like it's different countries. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's it's all the European countries, um, similar to how like soccer does it, but just like obviously on a smaller stage if it's basketball in Europe. But yeah, like uh, the top guys in the Euro League are normally like the top guys for like most countries after the the guys from from the NBA. Um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like Dirk for Germany was like obviously the the yeah. best player on the German team, but then all the like best best like German other German guys made, like some of them probably played in, in the Euro League. You're of you're. This is a smooth, uh, not a smooth transition, but mm -hmm. you're a very funny. I'm oh, saying thanks, this to the people watching in case they've never seen you do other stuff than basketball. You're not just for a basketball player. You're hysterical. Thanks, man. And that's a weird thing. That's a weird thing to be strong and athletic, <laughs> and then still have developed this defensive skill set of deferring attention or controlling attention in a way that right. you have a very good ability of doing are you conscious of where that comes from uh part of it is i think for me being like the youngest the, my the youngest kid um how know, many brothers just one brother but then you know cousins all that mm -hmm. I was like the youngest of, of everybody so i think like part of it was just like always like trying to feel like you had to do stuff for attention um some of it's probably just like my own insecurity um, yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because Let's dive into that because um, I'm I'm very attracted to people's awareness of their insecurities. Oh, it makes yeah. I connect with that right, very much. Right, right. We met in just for laughs. We did a couple of shows together. Mm -hmm. We talked on Twitter a couple of times, mm -hmm. but I don't know you, you know. And you came over my house, and I've st I've talked about this multiple times. By the way, you were wearing a sweater, and it just. The way you wear a sweater, when I buy sweaters, I want it to, I want it to look the way a sweater's supposed to, the way you wear a sweater, you know? It's not the sweater. It's the shoulders they're on, you know? Okay. And you came over with a sweat. You just looked awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was like, the best way I could explain it, superheroes, they have... <laughs> They have like if you buy a superhero costume, uh -huh. they they the good ones they subtly have, cut out the pecs and the abs, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like oh you can see their muscles, but it's not really their muscles, so it's it's fake. Right. The way your sweater fit you, you couldn't see the cuts of anything, but every like the chest stuck out further than the stomach, even though it was tight against the stomach. The shoulder it was just you looked crazy. Okay. So I just remember saying. By the way, Brent and I, Brent Morton, uh -huh. we always comment on people's hairlines and their shoulders. We're just, okay. that's, you can't, yeah, yeah. God gave you that. There's nothing you could do. Right. You know? So I'm like, yeah, you, you, that's, you look amazing in that sweater. And you like went like this. And I, you went like, I don't know. And like you were, I don't know. I don't think you were joking. No, I would probably, I, probably I think wasn't. you, so that's when I first noticed your comedy to me seems like it comes from insecurity. Yeah. Um, do you know? I mean, I'm censoring myself from being like hitting on you too much, but like, you know how cool, I mean, just 
you aside, you and your soul and your personality aside, all the superficial statistics right, right, of what right. you've done and what you've accomplished and literally your build. Okay. You're an NBA all-star. Mm-hmm. Like when I go to LA fitness and then I win two games in a row, mm-hmm. like I win two games in a row, not we, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. And like people don't know what I could do. I'm in the goggles and I'm goofy looking. Right. You feel good about yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I feel like I'm a king. Yeah. I really, I feel like I'm a king. Like mm-hmm. you guys don't. And also I'm, I'm sure I'm not that great. You know, I mean, you could make fun all you want, but in my head up until a couple of years ago when some new self-awareness came in, <laughs> sincerely, yeah. I, I knew I was never, I, I'm not making a joke. I knew I was never going to be in the NBA, right, right. but I always played as if you never, like they might need someone to practice with them. Right, you know, they right, might, right. they might, who knows? Like you thought that like, if say like Phil Jackson accidentally like walked in and you you were playing and you were playing at your level, you thought like maybe you would catch his eye. Yeah, he would maybe come up to me, right, and say, uh, well, "Where'd you play?" Yeah, yeah, and well, I would I would tell well, him, just, "You, uh, yeah. I'll be Phil Jackson, yeah, yeah. maybe." Uh, hey, hey, son, uh, where'd you play? Uh, I uh, I went to Kent State. I. I play basketball. Oh, okay, Kent State. yeah, John yeah. John uh, Sturman, coach over there. You played for him? Yeah, well, I I uh, I practiced with the team sometimes. Okay, yeah, but I yeah, I, I oh, thanks, I can man. Tell you got a nice build, got a good game. Do you think you'd come and do my podcast? Is that what are you smoking? Well, Phil Jackson's known for smoking weed. Oh well, f- pardon me, Phil Jackson. <laughs> do you, would yeah, you? Yeah, I'd think about it. All right, very cool. As long as I could light some incense and smoke some weed, yeah, that'd be great. And scene, yeah, that's yeah. What, so that's, that's in your happen. mind, that's what was going to happen. Could happen. Well, realistically, in my, in my mind, I didn't know about the weed stuff, but everything else, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I just threw that in as like a fun thing for the audience if they know Phil Jackson. Or not. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a perfect situation of what I think could still, still think could happen. Even with post, even with. I'm going to tell you, I'm still. I, I I was out for months. I started playing two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Still I'm, got it. I still got it. Yeah. I still got it. Okay. I saw you. Did you like dunk recently? You did like a little drop, drop step, step dunk? Yeah. I don't, why'd you put the camera angle so low? Like, why didn't you show that it was a drop step? Because like you put the camera angle at, a, at an angle where you could have just run in and dunked from anywhere. Yeah. Well, I wasn't planning on saying drop step. I didn't even know I could drop step. I just put it there. there and you. then I'm, you know, and then I tried it again. I put it against the wall to show the drop step. Sure. And I checked i the ball hit the the rim so hard that i had to stop playing for the day okay <laughs> I, I missed it so hard that i hurt myself all right but i feel that my level of play because i'm a comedian is if it, let's say they uh are you the best comedian basketball player yeah wow yeah nice. um in the comedy basketball league i was in i won there was awards every year yeah. and they they make them up and one of the awards was best player slash worst comic yeah. which i took fine because i'm not insecure about my I don't think my value comes from stand-up comedy. Right. I think it comes falsely from a good being a good basketball player, because right. that's where people started to like me finally. Yeah. So as long as you think I'm, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm a horrible comedian. But have you seen me play ball? You know what I mean. Right. That's where my value is. Right. So I feel that if I'm doing, if I get a, a small role in the new Space Jam movie, which do you have anything to do with this? I don't. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Okay. Well, if I had a small role in that, mm-hmm. I don't. Okay. I'm sorry. And they, as a comedian, like looking for people who could still play ball. Right. And then they actually saw me uh-huh. and LeBron came up to me. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, you could actually hoop. I would remind him, hey, man, you know, we played against each other in high school. Yeah. And then he would be like, for real? Is that, uh, was that racist the way I said for real? No, not at all. All right. How could I do it racist? How could you do it racist? Yeah. All right. Ready? <laughs> uh, I think, I think you say word <laughs> right 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 right. but you could do that at least you could do half of that yeah <laughs> say <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. right All like right. calling me jack or something yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> um anyway but the point the beginning of that was can i tell you something yeah people have done that to me like uh you know i actually played against you and i i gotta be honest it just kind of like whew, i know you know because uh-huh. if i can't place if i there's people that i remember playing against but like if i can't place it then it like especially high school if it was college i'd be like oh nice where'd you play like you know but it's high school I, and not I, to like i think you should still say that because that's a nice way to connect i'm from ohio big fit blah, blah, blah. you should definitely do that i'm just saying like yeah so that actually happened with him once 
Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I connected with you on the getting in at halftime. I don't know why. My senior year, we played against LeBron his junior year. Mm-hmm. And he was just on the cover of SI the, the, yeah. the day before. Chosen one. Yes. So cool. Yeah. So 6,000 people, Shaq, Ron Artest, they're all at the game. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing a tie to school. I feel like I'm the man. I've, I've played maybe 18 minutes the entire season. You know what I mean? I didn't okay. play. Okay. So right before halftime, I usually got in if we were up a lot at the end, you know, just scrub time. Mm-hmm. For some reason, because my, I was so energized on the bench, <laughs> right before halftime, the last like minute 20, the coach put me in. I, to this day, I don't know why. Right. But because of that, happened. Um, I have a picture with him is at the foul line the free throw line yeah, yeah i've seen this and it's in your apartment no i put on instagram oh yeah okay so cut to x years later a friend takes me to a Cavs game and he has uh i have friends that are friends with lebron now somehow okay. they're like playing in each other's flag football games and softball games and okay. it's the coolest thing okay and one of them brought me to a game and after the game we go back to the yeah, i noticed backstage room. family room family room yeah and I don't think it was even a room. It was bit. It was just where it was where people walk in and out of the locker room at the Staples Center. It's where you get snacks. So and there's a roped off section for people to wait to get autographs or to say hi or Mm -hmm. whatever. And oh, so you probably got like a a post game pass. Must been. Yeah. I'm standing in this huddle with kids. Yeah. Okay. Where I'm, I don't know, I'm 25. Yeah. I'm older than LeBron. Everyone else is a kid, and I'm standing in there with this picture that I brought of us at the foul line, wanting him to sign it. I have on my wall, because I'm a huge Cavs fan, on my wall, I have all the times the Cavs were on the cover of Sports Illustrated, so it's just LeBron all over my wall, right? right? And I said, hey, LeBron. Do you even have like the one where um, Michael Jordan hit the shot on Craig Elo? I don't. No, no, no. no. So only when it's featuring like the Cavs. One question. Yeah. I know this is probably, probably, you should be asking the questions. It's your podcast. Sure. was your high school good at basketball? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had. Um, do you know who Jim Jones is? No. He uh, won Jim a, Jones. Jim Jones. Oh no. He no. played in the seventies. Won a championship with the Lakers. He played for the Cavs. He was an NBA guy who in Ohio. That he's a celebrity, you know. Okay. And he had these triplets. Um, six six. Oh, the Jones triplets. Yeah. How okay. do you know them? I don't. I just funny know that they're less good. Good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. So uh, they were, you know, six six, two twenty in okay. high school. Yeah, yeah. And I was a, I played uh, a big guy, so I'm behind them. Right. You know, just I'm guarding him in practice. That's what my right, basketball right, right, life right. was in high school. Um so yeah, we were real good. So it wasn't necessarily that you were like really bad that you didn't play, you just like happened to have six or three triplets or triplets in front of you who were Yeah, also I wasn't I, I didn't start playing basketball till tenth grade. Oh okay. uh, I was a Magic the Gathering player. Um I got kicked out of school. Mm-hmm. for um well i was in this special learning disabled mm-hmm. class for troubled kids not and i would have to go through high school in that class unless i went to this other school and made it through it's called pep positive education program mm-hmm. and in that school i started playing basketball and i got back in 10th grade and i was very embarrassed about where i went oh, okay, um yeah. Yeah. and a couple of kids that I knew befriended, like said, "Hey, well, let's let's play ball." And I stay at up to school. I'm like, "Yeah, I play." I literally, I pl- I would play in my khakis and my glasses, and mm-hmm. uh, I tried out for the JV team. And it was I was at a point where we do layup lines, and I was so terrified to be on the left side because I couldn't make a left handed layup. Right. So I would do, and I didn't want to look because I didn't want the coach to pay attention to me. So I would ask the person who was uh, right after me if I to look to see if I made my left handed layup. I was har- bad. I just okay. same as. I can't say the same as you, but I get pretty focused on something and basketball, just like I need to get good at this. Mm-hmm. And I got good at basketball probably freshman year of college. Oh, okay. Um, I started working out then. I've been playing for a few years. Right. I, st- I finally learned it what the game came was. just together for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, happens. Some guys are late bloomers. I went on long about this. Thanks for your patience with me. Yeah, of course. But no, I, what I wanted to say was at the very beginning of this was I think of myself emotionally as a good basketball player yeah and a couple of years ago a couple i've talked about this on other podcasts but i came into some self-awareness about how i'm being received by other people and and more than that of how the narrative i've built about myself and who i am and what my value is and i've realized that oh maybe i'm not the best basketball player ever right but i still have a hard time connecting with that because i'm i i just I know you're hurt. I'm just looking at you, mm-hmm. and 
I, I feel like I could play it with you. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah, I got to say, that's just. Uh, I mean, we're, we're both humans. Yeah. I, I fundamentally, I know the game so well. Yeah. And I have such a quick first step. Yeah. When you're better. Do you play against NBA players a lot? A lot. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I've ever played against an yeah. NBA player, but I play against I just, D1 players a lot. I think that you'd be very surprised at how I know fast I would. I know I would be. I know. some of these guys are. I know. And how big they are. I know. When I sit on the... like, How tall I, are you? 6'3". Oh, so you're like smaller than Russell Westbrook. Yeah. <laughs> Russell Westbrook's is like I, the fastest person on the planet. Dude, I, I, it's, it's when I watch highlights of, of him and I watch what he does and that's when I say to myself, it's like, Rick, remember, like, let's be realistic. But outside in your backyard, just an outdoor ball, there's a pool, we're doing jokes. I don't know. I feel like I want to do that. No, we'll see. Here's the thing. Like, if you hadn't have said that and we played one on one, if we hadn't had that conversation and we played one on one, like, yeah, I'm sure you. Just, right, because you wouldn't be trying. But if if it was like a whole thing on the line, I would be trying. Okay. Do I have a chance of beating you in horse? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, My, yeah, a lot, that, that, you have a better chance of beating me at horse than one on one. What happens if we play one on one, knowing that I honestly feel like I could score on you a few times? What's the mindset you're gonna, you're gonna have with me? Are you, you going to treat me like an NBA player? Uh, yeah. Well, no. I, I would, I would, I would uh, approach the game um, very like seriously, I guess. Mm -hmm. But to treat you like an NBA player would mean I would have to like really give you like a lot of respect in different areas on the court. Of course, I respect everybody on the same level. But when it comes to on the court, I would like really press up, like really make it hard for you to dribble any direction and just you know. Right, so that you're going to guard me strategy. tight, and you're going to play physical. Absolutely. Am Anytime I allowed you to be try physical to cross, with you? I'm, oh, of course. Please, uh, it works to my advantage. Please be physical. I, 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 I told you. Go ahead. No, I was just saying. I, in in an NBA game going against NBA players, I want to be physical. If they engage in like a physical game with me, I have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. I just that's like one pointer I'll give you. I just got in a conversation with my buddy Sullivan, David Sullivan, mm -hmm. about this the other day about how when people are pushing me, I feel that that's 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 a sign of respect because it's like they feel they need to do that. Yeah. So I love sure. it, sure. and I subconsciously connect with people getting physical and aggressive and pushing right, and right. talking shit even. Yeah. And I've I've built a understanding that shit talking and physical and aggression is the way that you connect with people. And um, I've taken that past basketball. Oh, I've taken no, it into my life. That's not good. Uh-huh. Yeah. And this is a this is part of these new things that I'm learning. Yeah. We haven't really talked about this. Sure. But um we stopped being friends for a little bit. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah, it is. That's I'll I take full responsibility, but yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. I know my side of it. Would you feel comfortable talking about what happened? Yeah, we were like sitting in my office doing like a, a you know, talking like this. Yeah, on a podcast. On podcast stuff. Uh, it's not really a podcast unless it's a podcast, you know what I mean? So we were just recording ourselves. Yeah, but I mean, with the intention, with we're the, sitting there, yes, yes, with yes, the intention with of the people intention. are probably going to hear this if we put it out. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't even remember the set. <coughs> excuse me i don't remember the setup but i know you, that you were in you were in your your little wheelie thing for your yeah, knee yeah, you had like yeah. a let you cast on uh it's for my toe but yes and uh you were i was first time i was in your house you uh asked if i wanted something to drink mm -hmm. and um you said coffee yeah and you went and you got you made it and it's 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 not as easy to make a coffee when you have you know mm -hmm. an injury mm -hmm. and then you okay go go on i don't remember how you got to it but uh, you said something about me being a little bitch. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like when you said that, I like had this revelation. I was like, is this guy just like using me to like get a podcast going? You know, because we didn't know each other that well at the time. Oh, all right, go on. And I so then I started like going down this road with that. And then like also like just like the word bitch in general is just not not like it. I told you this, but like in the NBA world, like you call somebody a bitch, like you really got to mean it and you're really going to have to like back that up afterwards. Yeah. You said that's one of the, that's the worst thing you could say to somebody in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, besides going to like some words that right. nobody says. Um, yeah. I think that's the worst thing you could say to somebody. In the okay. NBA. 
um, the revelation that thrown. you had. Yeah, I had just like this revelation. Um, I, I just like kept thinking about that and I couldn't shake that and I never like got back on track of our podcast. I didn't know that until just now. Oh, I told you that. No, then I then I I, I would have clocked that. I must have not. What what you told me was that you know we didn't know each other very well, mm-hmm. and I was a guest in your house, and I was just that was just I was disrespectful to you. No, no, no. no. I never said disrespectful. Then I'm remembering. I, I just I just I just I explained to you like what that word like yeah what I associate that word with. But I don't think you. I don't think you're being disrespectful. The way I remember it is, you took a little jab at me, a friendly one of you talking about my left arm, or I, you could beat me in basketball, whatever it was, just right, right, friendly right. shit talk. Right. And the combination of me being very competitive, and me having this what I talked about this built in understanding that aggression is connection. Yeah. I uh, went. I snapped back a little harder, and mm-hmm. I called you a bitch. And in my head, and I remember I told you this then in my head. You're, like I said, you're a superhero. Look at your fucking, the way your sweaters look. I'm saying, will you please think that my arms look okay? So in my head, I'm thinking. Well, no, I, yeah, I guess we're just like, I guess like in my mind, I just like, the, I, I got to be very good friends with somebody to like call them a bitch. Yeah. I, I, that's just how it is for me. Cause like, I just, yeah, that's just how it is for me. Hey. And I didn't. I didn't think that. I know that some people don't think like that. So I didn't think that. I just. I just went into like this whole thought process, and we still talked after that. I just like couldn't get back on track of like, yeah, the whole kit. Can we stop real quick? I got. Yeah. I need an eye drop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes total sense. I connect with people very fast. I yeah. find, even you and I, we did a show together, and I have a puppet, and then I. I asked you to come up on stage with me. Yeah. I didn't ask you beforehand. And you came up on stage with me. Um, and you sat down and you had me sit on your lap as if I were your puppet. Right. Great pick, funny stuff. And to me, it was like, that was awesome. I mean, you know, you're just doing a show and that's great. Uh, but to me, it was like, that was fucking cool. I'm so excited to post this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then we did the show the next night. And the next night was when we, we did banter upstairs. Uh, this next guy literally brought the house down last night. He was amazing. Uh, very, very funny dude. Hope you guys can keep up. Give it up for Rick. And it was just like, I just felt, I just felt funny with you. I felt like a friend with you. Mm-hmm. You just played the way my friends play. You were funny and you're a basketball player. You know, it was unrelated. Okay. And it was just like, oh, cool. So um, part, of, part of my willingness to say, Blake, will you come up here and me sit on your lap? Mm-hmm. And just be completely comfortable and safe, like I've known you forever. Right. Is the same part of me, and that that's where it works in my favor. Right, right. But that's the same part of me being very familiar with you, or projecting it at least, and mm-hmm. safe and comfortable. Like, listen, I'm a good guy. All right, I, I know me. I don't realize you don't know me. It's right, hard right, to right, recognize right, that. Right. I I know my intentions. Right, right. Y- y- why wouldn't you love me? Yeah. When you talk about basketball, when people push me, I like that. I don't associate it differently from sports or not sports. So I didn't realize what I was doing. I got kicked out of school. I got kicked out of, uh, I got kicked out, I think I've told you, I got kicked out of a basketball game with my boss. Mm-hmm. Um, I got kicked out of a poker game two weeks before. I, I've never smoked a cigarette. Like I'm not this bad boy. And I'm kicked out of shit constantly. <laughs> right. uh, my friend called it the Cinderella effect, that I'm like this princess. I'm beautiful and you love me. But then inevitably the, the clock strikes midnight and my, I turn into a, a hag, a slut <laughs> hag who drives around in a pumpkin with rats as my friend. Right. And it's clock struck midnight with you here, my friend. And what I didn't realize was that you thought I was trying to get something out of you. And I oh, would, I have those thoughts all the time, though. You have to, right? Yeah, because yeah. of I, Because of it's just celebrity? my insecurity and like just, just, I think maybe it's like human nature a little bit. I would love to talk more about that. Sure. Because you're a famous person and people are fans of yours and or... Um, I guess not. Go ahead. Is, is, is you saying I would love to talk more about that? Is that like a way of like making sure that it's, is that like a thing that you do? Yes. Huh. I'm making sure that you feel that that's okay. Huh. That's in, did somebody like tell you that that's a, that's one of the new tools I've learned. Huh. Yeah. That's, that's, in, a, that's a, that's a, that's a really good, um, like way to keep going. Oh, um, but it, 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 does you say, do you say that in like regular conversation or only when in the pot? Really? Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. I don't think I could say that and like people would think I was being 
sarcastic. I've come across that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, people think, people don't know. Uh, I have like the, such a like monotone, like dry sense of humor that people have, I will be saying the most serious thing ever and people will laugh and I'll be saying the most like joke thing ever or whatever. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, that's a thing that I deal with all the time. So can I give you a little advice? If this, uh, this, so I, I was diagnosed with autism a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And the reason I decided to go get this diagnosis as opposed to just realizing I have it was so I could learn more about it and figure out exactly what this meant. And one of the things I read about adult diagnoses is if I learn about this and about myself, I will not only help me communicate better with other people, it'll help me tell them how to communicate better with me. Right. So when I'm in a new relationship with somebody, this isn't like somebody that I feel like I might meet again. Right. I will often say something like, hey man, I just want to give you a heads up. I sometimes lack self-awareness. If I ever say something that makes you feel that I'm being weird or too silly or annoying, you got to just tell me or I'm not going to pick up on it. Just say, Rick, stop. And that's not something that you would use because that's not what you're missing. Right, right. But what you could say to people is, a lot of times people don't know when I'm joking or serious. So if you're- If that makes you uncomfortable, just tell me. Yeah. Or not even uncomfortable because if, if, you, quit, if you don't know what it is. Right. Oh, if, you, if, you, yeah. if you're ever unsure, please ask. I'm never going to lie to you. Oh, yeah. No, you know? That's good. That's good. Um, I, I think people can't differentiate the difference between a joke and a lie. And to me, it's the intention. When I make a joke, I don't want to pull the wool over your eyes. I right, think right. you know. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. Anyway, what was it that we were talking about? I, I was talking about I your celebrity. Time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, tell me about that. So I've had my friends that I've had since my three closest friends. One I met when, I was, when we were seven years old. The other two I met when I was 12. Mm-hmm. And still very close with them today. They both, they all three live in Oklahoma. Um, never had to question anything because, like, I knew them since I was a kid. You know, anybody that I meet from like a certain time on, like, I've always had this period of like having to judge them, or not judge them, but gauge them. You know, and and I always like I'm always looking, I'm always watching people, always. Like sometimes people probably don't think that I, I'm like paying attention to like things going on around me, but I'm always watching. Can and you tell me examples of things you've noticed? How people react in certain situations, um, how people, what people use me for, what people ask for. What do people use you for? T anything. I mean, t people ask for, people will just straight up ask for money. People will ask for um crazy favors tickets shoes clothes um you know i've messaged you about shoes before yeah <laughs> did you think that i was really asking you for shoes um no i, I don't remember like in the way that you asked me for okay. shoes but um no i don't think so yeah i didn't even yeah that makes sense but you have to th you have to realize like you asking for shoes is a joke but i also have probably like a hundred other people actually asking me for shoes in my head that's my joke that right. is is uh, oh oh i want to get some free shoes right but i'm, I'm touching to think of like a way to make it make sense to you um i i, I totally understand what you're saying people you are always I mean? asking for stuff yeah but like again like that doesn't make me like that that alone doesn't make me think like oh this person just i just like it's just a it's a note you make it's a Did, mental note you make were you like this before making it into the nba well, no, because I didn't have anything. No one asked me for stuff. No, no, no. People didn't ask me for things when I didn't I, have. I know anything. When, before LeBron went to the NBA, there were people trying to get stuff from him. He's talked about that, right, right, right. But, but I, he was a different. LeBron was on a whole different level, whole different level. But, but when in high school, once I started to become a little bit more well known, like in the state, and then a little bit nationally, like yeah, I definitely had people. You know, I had like cousins come out of the woodwork, and especially when I committed to Oklahoma, I had more cousins come out of the woodwork and I had friends who I, you know what I mean? Like I've heard so many stories about cousins. It's always cousins because there's so many of them. Yeah, there was a guy named Kevin Griffin who like hit up my brother and I on Facebook and, and was claiming to be our cousin so hard. And we're like, he would like, he would like, he'd be like, uh, I'm, I'm coming to Norman. Like, I'd love to take you guys to lunch. No relation to him at all. He would like come to games and he would stay wait after and like bring us like a fitted hat you know everybody's wearing fitted hats at the time he would like bring us like gifts you know and we absolutely had no relation to this guy how'd that make you feel scared no annoyed. not scared annoyed yeah he was, he was it was annoying 
you also realize like over time, like after being in the NBA for a certain amount of time, you realize that most people that come up to you and ask you for like maybe an autograph or, or a picture, most people, not all people, most people don't actually give a shit about you. They don't, especially right. people asking for a picture. They want the picture so they can show somebody or they can put it on Instagram. They People will walk up and say, they'll see me take a picture with somebody else and they'll walk up and say, hey, can we take a picture? And I go, yeah, sure. Click, what's your name? You know what I mean? That, what an interesting observation. And autographs is more personal because it's less public and proof. Yeah, I mean, you could always, I guess, take a picture, but that's yeah. kind of like, right. all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but then on the flip side, there's guys who like wait outside our hotel rooms who just, or our hotels who just get the autographs to sell. Yeah. I've had very little experience with that, but it's <laughs> happened to me. And, it, and, and it, when somebody asks for an autograph, it makes me feel so good. But then when they, they, they go around and they realize they have, they have a few more yeah. pictures for me to sign, yeah. even though it's happened to me eight times, I'm already like, I have a, cra- oh. I have a crazy story. My, my sophomore year of high school, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, college, I kind of started to like, um, I guess in the basketball world, like become a little bit more well-known. Like I was projecting towards like going number one uh, in the draft. And, and I'm walking out of the tunnel after a day game one time and I'm like on my way to like, a, you know, a teammates apartment we're gonna like hang out and these like four guys stop me and they have like these big like boxes and they like open open it up and it's like a huge blown up picture of me and like hey can i get your autograph and i'm like yeah sure and so i signed one and he like pulls that out and there's another one and i'm like all right so i signed another one keeps pull- and i must have sat there and signed autographs for like 20 minutes for these like five guys why'd you do it I didn't know at the time. I was 18 years old. I I, I, didn't, I didn't know that they were like what they were doing. Like I, I just like, they were like super nice to me. And like, I was like, I didn't want to be like rude and be like, nah, like just one or like, you know, two or whatever. And I, I sat there and I signed a bunch. And, and then like, once I like, it might sound stupid. I know like 18 seems like, all right, it's like a little old to like be that naive, but like it just, that's just, how I was like I'm a kid from Oklahoma City playing at Oklahoma and like I never really like experienced that like that um and oh you know the guy they would be like yeah yeah, we're in the military we just got back from mm. I don't know whether they were or they weren't but you know I especially didn't want to like say no to like somebody who served for our country sure and like now I think back on that and I'd like wish I'd just been like man like listen like I if if you were in the military, I appreciate everything you've done, but I just can't sit here and sign. You know, you'll sign one hundred autographs. Yeah, of course. When are you happy to do it? When are you annoyed to do it? Always happy when it's a kid. What's the cutoff from kid to not kid to you? Uh, if you're in high school, you're a kid. Oh, a kid is still high school. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So under eighteen or under? Because I remember one time I was fifteen years old and I, I met Carmelo Anthony and I like I got like. I got an autograph on like my pass. He was at the McDonald's All American Game. Was in Oklahoma City. I got an autograph on my pass, and then I was like, "Oh, I need to get an autograph for like my brother or something." I went back and I got another one, and he signed both of them. Um, Have you ever told him about that? I told him about that. Yeah. What a cool experience to. Yeah. Um, I see it a lot on uh, in the NBA because there's so much footage yeah. of kids from yeah. younger, especially like the high school All American yeah. and the McDonald's stuff. And then, like, these are people they look up to, and now they're playing against them and mm-hmm. giving each other jerseys mm-hmm. and shit. Who have you played against that was somebody that you looked up to? Was um, Carmelo one? Yeah, for sure. Could you name, like, the big ones? Like, Tim Duncan watched him forever. That was kind of like my first, my, my first preseason game was at San Antonio. I was warming up on one end. Like, you know, we warm up hours before the game, not like the layup line warm up. Mm-hmm. And I was doing, like, my whole thing with the coaches. And I remember, like, I, I turned and I looked up court, and Tim Duncan was like, doing his like warm up and I was like like I, I remember just be like not really chills but I just remember being like taken aback and I was like whoa I'm about to play against this guy who I've been watching for 12 years since I was eight years old did you have an interaction with him once we started playing yeah and he was like so cool and like uh, my our whole career every time we played he was so cool and he would always make like these funny like little jokes like he would like the first like um, free throw if we were lined up next to each other he'd like he'd like look over and be like oh, fuck not you you know what I mean like not you again I'm sick of you or something like that 
That's got to feel you so know what I mean? cool. And it was like, and now I do that. I'm not saying like I'm in like Tim Duncan, but I do that to guys now. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's a young guy that comes in and instead of being like, like trying to like bully him or like be like a dick to him, like some guys were to me, I, I you, you almost like engage them with this like kindness mm. and you're almost like disengaged to like, because whenever somebody was a dick to me, all I wanted to do was kill them. All That's all I wanted to do. Right. And I kind of just like realized that at a certain point, like these kids come in a league and they've been watching you play for a long time and you you engage them in like a way, it's just, it's totally like disarming. Is there any strategy to that as making them be less competitive to you? Yeah, probably. I mean, some guys are good and some guys are really competitive, but like, yeah, there's definitely guys like, there, there's, there's some guys like, I'm not going to say who, but like there's a guy who... Um, had come up kind of through like the G League and, and you know, made his way to the league mm-hmm. and he played like really hard and played with a chip on his shoulder. And, um, Me. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Jackson. <laughs> um, and he was very like aggressive. Like one time I, I remember like, it was like a free throw and I went to go grab the ball and he like bumped into me and he like try, he tried to like make it into something. It was clearly nothing, but that was just like probably mm-hmm. his way of like playing with a chip on his shoulder. And I kind of remember like looking at him and like it was towards the end of the game, didn't really whatever. And then the next time we played him, he had uh, he had a good year and he signed a bigger deal. And I remember the first time we played him, we lined up next to him on the free throw line. I looked over and I was like, "Hey, congrats, man! Like you earned that." And now it's just like, phew. I've seen you, uh, you. You had a I don't remember what it was, but I saw it on your Instagram. You went back to Oklahoma, the college, mm-hmm. and you brought everyone shoes. All right, so now I'm on my way to check out the basketball teams get them hyped and see what happens welcome you guys to a, a bigger family um, a family that I've been a part of for a long time um, <laughs> Got a few pointers, got a few tips, things we can clean up, things we can, some mistakes we can clean up. <laughs> what does that feel like oh, to you? Oh, that, I mean, I mean, part of, part of why they were freaking out is because I was announcing to them that Oklahoma was becoming a Jordan basketball school. I mean, a Jordan school. Right. So they, they were, were all the football swag. players and basketball players. They were all going to get Jordan. So when I came, I each I brought each of them a pair of what was it? Eleven? No, not Elevens. I can't remember which shoe they got, but they ended up getting like a, a their first like OU Jordan shoe. Um, so like that was. And know, how do you guys? Do, how do you know how? That. Do you have everyone's shoe size already? Yeah, I mean, I didn't like pers- like it was yeah. like Jordan, like you know, of course, yeah, like, you know, the, whoever the equipment manager for each team has everybody's, so they just get a size run and all those, and everybody got a pair in their locker, and then when we went back to the locker room, they like busted in. Were they any of them picking your brain? Were they asking strategy stuff, basketball stuff? Was it what was it like pictures? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like football team, obviously no, but basketball team. I mean, I've, I've like been around those guys before, you know, like Trey Young, who's now mm-hmm. in the in the league. Other than Tim Duncan, you have a relationship with Jordan. Yeah. What's that? What's that relationship? Um, Tell me about the first time you met Jordan. How old? The first time I met him, I was in high school. I was like sixteen. I played against his son in a championship game of a tournament, and um, maybe seventeen. Had had like a we we beat them. I had like a a solid game, and I remember afterwards he came up to me and. and, he said, like, way to hoop, you know, something like that. Uh, and I, I, like, probably blacked out and, like, don't really remember it that well. And then <clears throat> I played in the Jordan All-American game my senior year of high school. And he, when he, we, everybody got a chance to take a picture with him. And when it's my turn, he walked up and he goes, he goes, man, you got bigger since the last time I saw you. And I go, <laughs> and he, like, did that, uh-huh. you know. And I was like, holy shit, he remembers me. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, that was, like how crazy it was to me and then i signed i played with nike I was, I was a nike athlete my first three years in the nba and then i signed with jordan and then you know from then i I've been how is that different i always look at jump man jordan it's as the same branch. thing it's the same thing it, you basically sign a contract with nike but then you know you, you you're asked if you like jordan jordan selects people 
from from the mm-hmm. Nike pool, and then you can go over there. Um, so it's it's the same, but it's it's weird because it's different. Jordan was a Nike athlete, and then he got a shoe line, and right. now it's become this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have your own shoe too now. I have like a signature shoe within the Jordan line. So it's not Nike. It's it's Jordan. It's Jordan. Yeah. So Jordan has other people with him now. Yeah. Who else does Jordan have? <clears throat> uh, Russell Westbrook is Jordan. Right. Kawhi Leonard was. He just left to go to New Balance. Chris Paul, Carmelo, uh, Victor Oladipo. He's Jimmy, making money. Jimmy Butler, Kimba Walker. Jordan is like a multiple billion dollar business. He recently came out to defend LeBron against, oh. not at the closet. <laughs> <laughs> he, he um, oh, could you imagine how, what that would do? If, if it came out that Jordan was gay, how everybody would, would there be world peace? It would be so big for, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of people, yeah. a lot of things. But yeah, well, let's start the rumor here. Yeah. I, I hear that he's gay. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I hear you on the silence. He- <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably cut that out. <laughs> like you know, I don't know the rules of how political. Yeah, I just I also like much. He's from a much different era that does not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, yeah but what i was what i was saying is he recently came out to back lebron up mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. some trump stuff <laughs> and the news of that was how jordan never does that because whether whatever his opinion is doesn't matter because he's this he's the big shoes. brand he's selling shoes and that was such a such an eye-opening thing to me of how even as an athlete your politics could dictate your money yeah have you ever come across something like that uh not really i just like i'm not a super political person to start with um i could i could phrase that question more specific to you are there ever times where you want to speak your mind even if it's about nba but there are like you've been trained and taught publicity wise that i have i'm a brand and i have to be a certain way i think maybe early on in in my career i might have like thought a little bit more about that but like especially in today's world man like i don't care if it's it's like republican or democrat or or or, um religious like whatever it is like i think there's certain fundamental levels of respect and and um if i like feel drawn to like say something i will like i mm-hmm. i at this point i don't care about the backlash do like, you think that's because of what you've learned as growing up like getting older as a human being or is it because what you've earned as being in the league as long as you've been i think it's just getting older as a human being i i don't see it as anything right. to do with the league i just like <clears throat> i've gotten to a point in life and i guess it is part of being in the nba i've gotten to a point in life to know that like you know there, there's going to be people that support you and love you no matter what there's going to be people that hate you and dislike you no matter what and then there's going to be some people in between who you can probably sway or probably not but i don't know man i I see a lot of guys like a lot of the guys like on instagram and and, uh, social media who seem like they have their shit together the most and seem like they have this life are the ones that in fact are the exact opposite but like it's crazy because i even get i even get like caught up in it to the point where i'm like man like it's crazy like they got they got he's just like got it covered doing everything right what do you mean i'll see like guys do that and then you like realize or you see them up close or you you mm-hmm. hear stuff you know you like the nba is a small brotherhood you hear stuff and like you're like man like i was literally fooled and like i should have known like i knew that you know i just forgot which is crazy to me like really crazy you said something that that was a big discovery for me uh a few years ago which is you really you could try and get kind of good at it but it's impossible to control and manufacture people's opinions of you Mm -hmm. and to accept that like like you said some people are going to like me some people won't and then there's that gray area but there's nothing you could do about it that's a pretty freeing place to be yeah can i get a glass of water so you get your first uh your you're the first pick in the nba and then you immediately sign a three-year contract with nike right yes the nike contract is significantly more money than the nba no right it wasn't for you no I, my impression was always that endorsements are, are if more. The, if you're the first pick, I mean, you're getting the most you could possibly get in that draft. That's how it works. But they and, also, picked. and also big men don't really get great shoe contracts. Yeah. Why is that? Because they don't, they're not handling the ball. And, they're not doing yeah. like all the stuff that like kids want to watch, you know? Is there a shift that happens to your psyche of, 
obviously there is. When does the shift happen of, oh my gosh, this is real? Is it when you're drafted? Is it when you get the first check? Is it when you play the first game? I think it's like a, a series of stages. You know what I mean? When you're, you're, you get drafted, yes, it's like, wow, that's like, this is a moment I've been dreaming of. You'll play in summer league. You, you sign your first contract. You go to your first training camp, your first media day. You know, like it's all those things. And then you finally start playing actual basketball games and um, the, like the, the newness. You, you, you stop doing something for the first time. At a certain once you play your first regular season game, do you know what I mean? Does that so in so your freshman year of in the Rook, NBA rookie year, rookie year no. excuse me, do you um, it becomes normal or does that does that happen year two, year three? Uh, I think, I think, yeah, games start to become normal. Um, I'd probably say like, I don't know, January after like playing like 40, 40 games or so, you kind of start to like get into this routine, but. Up until then, everything everything you're doing, like they're actually probably your second year, because up until your your through your whole rookie year, you're still like you're going and playing at road arenas that you've never played at, mm -hmm. you know. So you're getting these new experiences. You're traveling to cities you haven't been to, or you haven't you haven't been to as an NBA player. So everything is just so new. And then the second year, it's just like, all right. Did know. you bring your portable DVD player as an in any NBA trips? Um, no. By then. I was doing, I would bring my laptop, I had a laptop. But I think I still had my DVD sleeve. What does, uh, this is such a corny question, but please answer it personally and not if, as, a, in, like as an NBA player. What does a championship, winning a championship mean to you? Because you had goals mm -hmm. um, your freshman year of college, between freshman and high school, and you accomplished all of them except for winning the championship. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for you? I, I know no other way to answer this besides a genuine way, and it's going to sound like an NBA player way. Um, it's literally, I, I remember winning my first championship as like a kid. Freshman and you're in high school. No, 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 no. Like, like even as a kid, like winning, like going and playing in like a national tournament, you mm -hmm. know, as a kid, I think I was like maybe like eight or nine or 10. And I remember winning this national championship and the feeling that I had like after that game, winning that game, after that game, that whole day, there was an award ceremony the next day. Like we went up on stage in front of hundreds and hundreds of kids and got this gold ball and we each got medals. I rem I still remember that feeling today. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I like scored 30 points or 20 points. I don't think I did. It's because I felt this like thing with inside of me. And I don't know why, but like that's just how I feel. Because when you're as competitive as a lot of us are and have been your whole life and now, you know, the the the, the measure of success for players is championships. Mm -hmm. That's why Jordan and Kobe Bryant and all these guys are measured against each other because they were the champ they were the best players on with the most championships. So a championship to me is like chasing that ultimate feeling. Like I, I don't know what that feeling feels like to win an NBA championship, but I I, I like I hope to one day have that feeling because I remember how it felt when I was eight years old winning a national championship in San Antonio, Oklahoma. I mean, San Antonio, Texas. Um, for like, and it was nothing. Are you willing and wanting to base your life, meaning what team you're on, where you're living, around that, the mm -hmm. way that a lot of people yell at Durant for doing? Um, does that matter? Does Durant, does Durant care that people think what he did was just? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's hard not to care. Um, he wants to prove himself. Yeah, I think it's hard not to care. Um, can't take those championships away from him, though. I don't know that. I don't know that I'll do it in like in the same way, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll especially like as I get towards the end of my career, I'll, I'll, you know, be conscious of that for sure. I, I mean, at my level. I want to stack a team so I don't have to sit. You know, I, if I lose and have to wait, I don't want to. So I don't give a shit if we're the biggest. Right. I, I don't. I want to play constantly. Right. Can't even imagine what that is. What is it? What does it take for you to do that? 
you have plans. You've been someone who has plans and strategy your right. entire life right. of accomplishing things and have pretty much done it at the highest level. What do you need to do oh, that's oh, outside oh, of yourself? I mean, it's a lot of the, my game has changed so much. Like I can see myself now being able to go and fit into like a lot of different situations. You know what I mean? And I think like after this contract, after my contract's up, like I'll probably have a, a, a decision to make. I, I don't, you know, who knows what happens, but I'll probably have a decision to make, uh, you know, w whether I want to like go chase that or, or stay and um, chase that or, or whatever it may be. But I, I feel like I've, come almost full circle to a place in my career where um you know that, that that's that's a decision to make instead of you know being young and and you know re-signing with a team and, and trying to stay there and do that um you know which which i was doing in la and now would you do it different no you're happy with your decision to stay with the clippers as long as you did yeah yeah i wouldn't have the only thing the only i mean <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't have done anything different. I, I wish so. I wish that whole situation had gone down differently, but I wouldn't have done anything different. How do you wish it went down? Uh, I just wish I had been kind of given like the courtesy yeah. of um, you know being to being as a man, like man to man. These people that um, you know, I've been playing for this franchise for eight years, nine years. Um, I, I wish like as a man, people would have um, respected respected me enough to you know mm -hmm. go about it the right way. Do you think, because that happens all the time, is there a part of you that thinks that's what the business is or is it still personal? Uh, it is It is. It is part of the business. Getting traded is definitely part of the business. I understand that. It's the way that, they did it. But yeah, it's, uh, th there's, there's, you know, it, even in business, we say bi basketball is a business. Mm -hmm. Even in business, there's business ethics and there's ways you go about things. When you go back and play against them, how, what's, do you have that in your head? Oh, I mean, those guys like most of those guys I didn't even play with. I played with like Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell and, and a couple of those guys for half a season. So it's not the players, like they had nothing to do with anything. I have no, no ill will towards any, any player. Um, I just, you just leave with a, with a bad taste in your mouth. All right, I wanna wrap this up because I know you have conditioning to do, but I'm gonna end it with just uh, a great, a great hot button question that answer however you want because mm -hmm. I know it's a bullshit question. You actually suggested this to me once for a different podcast. Of I, this is what everyone asks. But uh, White Sox or Browns? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, the Jordan, Kobe, LeBron conversation. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me your, your top three in order and why? Oh, my top three in order. Uh, uh, assuming they're, they're t your top three. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, um, Jordan um, has had the best career to go to the final six times, to never lose uh, all the MVPs, um, the way he dominated scoring the basketball defensively, winning three in a row, retiring, coming back and winning three in a row, and just the way he did it with like the he was he was the coolest athlete ever mm. i like that you said coolest what does that mean he was awesome he wore he hit style uh-huh um like on and off the court um the way he carried himself um his like competitiveness his like he played golf and gambled in the summer and even during the season and like you know what i mean like the, the he just like he just did it mm-hmm Six times in the finals, never lost. Never went to a game seven. Like scoring average is crazy. Def all defensive mm -hmm. team, MVPs, like all that. Like he just, uh, and I don't know that we, we will allow another athlete to be what does that as mean? good as Jordan because we pick apart right. and scrutinize. and. So you're saying he's been romanticized? No, but he played in a different era. I don't know that he's been. I mean, yeah, I'm sure he's been, been romanticized. I mean, like once you, when, you know, if he was playing now, is he as dominant? It's the same thing as like when guys say, "Oh, the NBA in the '90s was too tough." Like these guys couldn't. No, we would just play differently. We can't play that way right. anymore. I right. can't hand check you anymore. I, you don't think I can hand check 
somebody <laughs> on the perimeter. Of course I can. Of course anybody right. else in the league now can. And like those guys would have played the way we play. So like doing this whole like, oh, this guy wouldn't have been this or these guys couldn't have been that Great is point. so stupid and irrelevant in such a like small minded way of thinking. Mm-hmm. It's just the nature of the game. Like, right. you don't think I could foul hard? <laughs> of course I can. Right. Like, we don't fight because we get fined for four games. You could go punch somebody in the face back in the day and get a tech. What's the biggest fine you've ever had? Uh, I think I got fined uh, 15000 for um, like not leaving the court in a properly manner. Or maybe I, I uh, yeah, this is my trainer. I'm going to text him. Well, since we have to wrap it up real quick, get get to the, the, the Kobe LeBron. Um, you could just pick a number um because the listeners need to know the listeners need to know what's up e? um jordan's my one i'll go um i think lebron is the second best player to ever play do you feel uh, that way when you play against him is this is there a cool factor that he has yeah it's harder because i see it like in a different light you know and you have so much more access like you're not back in the day like you didn't you only had a certain amount of access to right. jordan right um but Le- i mean the lebron kobe jordan thing is like sometimes it's it's matter of opinion but that's my opinion okay well blake uh do you have a website or someplace that people could check you out at um i do it <laughs> www.blakegriffin.com i don't know what you're gonna find on there or what, what uh <laughs> what you're looking for but um you could follow me on instagram at um blake griffin 23 i want to say and i i am i'm in a defensive place of of warning you that my eyes were probably water or at least they would have if i didn't say this because mm-hmm. it's i sometimes get watery eyes when i get sincere about yeah. stuff i already feel it coming on <laughs> like i feel this i'm about to start to cry yeah um i'm sorry no, for no, uh, well not just sorry for how i made you feel but also i'm sorry that i was able to do something like that and and not realize it and how many times in my life that is probably i know many but it's probably happened and crying right now that's all right but for being willing and wanting to be friends still and and do this podcast because again i didn't remember realize that you felt like i was asking something from like trying to take something from you and and now like coming into your home and and equipment it's like i I hope my intentions are clear to you i think i'm i probably like explained that wrong i think that all the time whether right maybe it's like warranted or not yeah. you know what i mean i i yeah it makes yeah, total not, sense I, you, 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 I, and i, I miss I just, that it's like part of my yeah um like i think reasonable paranoia not like i don't have like a crazy like paranoia problem but just like you're just constantly like, i think for me i'm constantly thinking constantly thinking and, and um part of that is that you know sometimes i just like get into a place where i'm like oh, like you know should I have done this? Should yeah. I have done this? You know, you second guess yourself. I'm not like the most secure, secure person. I'm insecure at times like everybody else. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't want to make it seem like it was like you did this crazy thing. And I was like, you know, it's just bad combination. Check out Blake and Blake Griffin, Instagram.com. <laughs> and uh, thanks guys. Shoes, oh, shoes back on shirts off. Yeah. Shout out to Bombas. Bombas would really be great. I mean, he wears the socks all the time. I don't know. It'd be great if you threw them a couple free pairs. Great. Do you mind if I stay here for a couple weeks? Scoop. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Blue. Scoop D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>